Now to finish off the story on this diagram, the blood from the aorta, as we've said, is going to go around all of the arteries of the body. So the aorta is going to break into progressively smaller arteries. That's going to break into the microscopic arteries we call arterioles. The blood's going to go through the capillaries, perfusing through the capillaries, draining in the venules, going into veins that are progressively larger veins until we get to the superior and the inferior vena cava. So the superior vena cava is draining the top half of the body and the inferior vena cava is draining the bottom half of the body. Now the blood started off as bright red in the aorta. As it's gone through the tissues of the body, it's given up oxygen to the tissues of the body. It's collected the waste carbon dioxide generated by metabolism in those same cells and cells and tissues of the body. And so it's going to come back to the right side of the heart via the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava as relatively deoxygenated blood. And the oxygen saturations have dropped by about 25 or 30 percent. So when the blood is leaving in the aorta here, we can actually detect this oxygen saturations here with our fingertip probes. And typically it's about, oh, let's say uh, 96 to about 98. Well, depends. If you take a few deep breaths, we'll go up to 100 percent in you. So um, 96 to 100 would be about normal. But by the time it gets back into the right side of the heart in the systemic veins, it's probably dropped down to about 70% or 70-75%. If you're exercising and you're taking more of that oxygen out of the blood, then that's going to drop further. But it's not fully deoxygenated when it goes back to the lungs. So we've kind of got a bit of reserve, which is a good thing here. So that's that full story. Now, the atria of the heart and the ventricles of the heart are contracting pretty well at the same time. So th they're contracting like that and they're contracting like that pretty well at the same time, well, at the same time really. So the heart is coordinated and it's interesting to think about what is actually being pumped out here because what we have here this blood coming out of the aorta that's going to be the systemic circulation blood pressure and of course we measure this when we take blood pressures on this series of videos that there's go through in great detail how to take blood pressure and when the heart is contracting that's called systole when, when the ventricle is actually in the act of contracting the pressure in here is going to be high that's going to force the blood into there at high pressure. And in you, that's probably about 120 millimetres of mercury. We measure this in millimetres of mercury. And again, if you watch the blood pressure video, you'll, you'll see why it's the way we used to do it. But then the heart's going to relax and it needs to relax so that the pressure in here will go down. And when the pressure in here in the left ventricle goes down, that allows the blood from the pulmonary veins to get back in and the blood from the left atrium to get back in to refill the ventricle. Absolutely essential that happens. And when that happens, the blood pressure in the arterial system doesn't drop to nothing because the arteries are elastic. So when the blood is pumped out during systole, it's going to expand the arteries like that. But then the arterial walls are naturally elastic and they're going to recoil back in. And as they recoil back in, that's going to maintain the pressure in the arterial system. And that's the pressure in the arterial system when the ventricle is not contracting during diastole, when the heart is not contracting. And that'll go down to about 80 or well, actually, hopefully a bit less than that. I mean, people have talked about standard blood pressures being 120 over 80 for years now. But if you're young and fit, I'd like to think your blood pressure is about 110 over 60 or 65 if, you, if you're young and fit. Because really, the, the lower your blood pressure, for, for many different reasons, the better. As long as you don't fall over, as long as you don't get dizzy when you stand up, and as long as you uh, can produce urine, then it's actually healthy to have, to have a lower blood pressure. So do get plenty of exercise. Do not put weight on. Don't eat too much salt. Do eat plenty of fruit and vegetables and things containing potassium and try and keep that blood pressure relatively low because th that's much better for you. Now, the blood pressure is the pressure in the systemic arteries and the blood pressure 
is determined by the cardiac output multiplied by the systemic vascular resistance. Systemic vascular resistance. So the blood pressure is the pressure of the blood against the walls of the vessel in which it's contained. And that's determined by cardiac output. And cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out in a one minute period. So the blood pressure is equal to the cardiac is equal to cardiac output and cardiac output itself equals the heart rate times the stroke volume. So the cardiac output, and we're talking about the left side of the heart here, we'll talk about the right side in a minute. And the left side of the heart for the systemic circulation, the cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out in a one minute period. And that equals the heart rate, that's the number of times the heart beats per minute. And the stroke volume is how much blood is in that left ventricle when it contracts. Now, typically in you, when you're at rest, there's going to be about 70 mils. So in other words, cardiac output is going to equal, if your heart rate is 70, it's going to be 70 times 70. So if the heart's beating 70 times a minute, each time it's pumping out 70 mils of blood, that will give you 4,900 mils, which is a cardiac output of well, it's going to be 4,900 mils, isn't it? Almost five litres. It's about five litres of blood being pumped out per contraction. Now, of course, the amount of blood being pumped out by the right side of the heart is going to be exactly the same. The volumes of blood pumped out by the right side and the left side are going to be identical. Otherwise, the lungs would fill up and the body would empty of blood or the body would empty and the lungs would fill up. Neither of which, are, of course, are desirable situations. But we do always notice in these diagrams that the, and indeed in life, that the left ventricle, the wall of the left ventricular myocardium, remember the myocardium is this heart muscle, it's much thicker than in the right. That's because it's not far to go to the lungs. The lungs are quite close. The lungs are just here in, in the chest on either side of the heart. So it's not very far for the blood to go. So the normal pressure in the pulmonary artery here might only be, say, 20 when the heart's contracting. And that might drop down to about 12 when the heart's relaxing. So much lower pressures. 20 over 12 as opposed to 120 over 80 as this blood goes to the lungs. But at a, a much shorter distance. So it's very useful to think of... Um, this physiology because the cardiac output is the heart rate times the stroke volume there um, but we notice that cardiac output is only one component of blood pressure there's also the systemic vascular resistance and that is the resistance generated by all the arterial system so the more narrow the arterial system the harder it is for the blood to get through and the higher the pressure so vasoconstriction is going to raise blood pressure. Then if the blood vessels dilate, they get wider. It's now easier for the blood to get through because it's wider. And that's going to tend to lower the systemic vascular resistance and therefore lower the blood pressure. So we've mentioned that there's five litres of blood approximately coming out per, uh, per minute. Quite amazing, really. Now, how much blood have we got all together? Well, that kind of depends on how big you are and whether you're male or female. But most people will only have about five litres of blood in their whole body. So if there's five litres of blood in the whole body and there's five litres of blood being pumped out by the left ventricle per minute, because it's 70 times 70, then can you see on average, on average, the entire volume of the blood is going through the left side of the heart per minute and therefore, by necessity, the same volume of blood is going through the right heart per minute. Quite amazing. Now, if you'd like to know how much blood you've got, you can work it out. Because if you're a female, then you can assume you've got about 65 mils of blood per kilogram. So pop to the scales, weigh yourself if you're a lady, 65 mils so if you weigh 60 kilograms it would be 60 times 65 now if you're male um you've got a bit more that's about 75 mils per kilogram now why is it that men have got more blood than women per kilogram of body weight this doesn't seem fair does it we don't, we don't want to be sexist here do we and yet this is the physiology of the matter 
And the reason is that women have proportionately more adipose tissue than men. Men have proportionately more muscle tissue compared to women having more adipose fatty tissue. And the fatty tissues of the body are not well perfused with blood. They have much less blood. Um, if you're a child, if you're, well, it depends how old you are, but if you're an infant, you've got about 80 mils uh, per kilogram for young children. And uh, if you're a neonate, well, you probably wouldn't be watching the video if, if you're a neonate, but if, if you are working with neonates, they've got about 85 mils of blood per kilogram. And premature babies have more, that they have about 96. And fetuses have about 96 mils of blood per per kilogram. But of course, if, you, if you're overweight, so if you're male or female and you're overweight, um, if you're a man, it's going to be, if you're overweight, it's going to be le le less than 75 mils a kilogram. So if you're very overweight, you might only have uh, 60 or 50 mils of blood per kilogram, which would mean it would be best to lose, to lose some weight. And the same for females as well. It would be females, if females are overweight, if they have too much adipose tissue, adipose tissue has proportionately less blood going through it. So again, um, it would be less than 65. So a, a very overweight uh, female might only have uh, 45 mils of blood per, per kilogram or something like that. But if you're reasonably good body weight, then it'd be interesting to calculate your particular blood volume. And having the amazing knowledge that each side of the heart is pumping out that total blood volume in a one minute period.